Good morning and welcome to the Killick & Co Market Update. We've had a little bit of weakness in markets this week and that was actually due to some data points that were stronger than expected and those have made the prospect of rate cuts a bit less likely. So it's one of those rare economic scenarios in which good news turns out to be bad news. Here's the S&P 500 over the last year, and you can see it has come down a touch since the end of March. So what were those stronger than expected data points? The first one was the non-farm payrolls, which came out last Friday. And these show how many new jobs the US economy has added during the last month. The March number was above expectations at 303,000. And what you can see on the chart here is that the number of jobs being created has been steadily increasing since October. And that suggests the economy is doing well with the rates at their current levels, so why risk lowering them too soon? The other data point was inflation itself. US CPI increased to 3.5%, and again, if the level of demand in the economy is sufficient to push inflation upwards despite high interest rates, then the prospect of lowering them too soon does feel like a bit of a risk. The latest traffic figures from Heathrow Airport came out this week. You might think that travel demand might be falling a bit given that airfares have come up a lot. There's unrest in the Middle East and also there's a lot of press coverage about these problems with Boeing planes, but that doesn't seem to be the case at all. In fact, Good Friday was the busiest day that Heathrow Airport has ever had. Here's the 20 year chart and you can see the annual spike in the summer holidays and also the big drop during lockdown but the numbers now appear to have returned to their normal trend. As well as looking at the passenger numbers, we also looked at the amount of cargo going through Heathrow. There's been an increase in cargo volumes of about 9.4% over the last year, and that's likely due to the shipping problems in the Red Sea. Air freight is a lot more expensive than sea freight, so this could well be eating into some companies' profit margins. And finally this week, shareholders in AstraZeneca voted on whether or not to give their chief executive, Pascal Soriot, a pay rise of up to 1.8 million pounds. While there was some opposition, the majority of shareholders approved the rise. It is difficult to read about this source of a pay rise in the middle of a cost of living crisis, but on the other hand, it is possible to understand why shareholders in AstraZeneca would be keen to do whatever they can to keep this chief executive in place. Here's the 20-year share price chart. From 2004 to 2012, the share price didn't really go anywhere. A lot of its drug patents had come up to an end and there was barely anything new in the pipeline. Pascal Soriot joined in 2012. He invested loads in research and development. The pipeline now looks really good and the company did really well with its development of a COVID vaccine. The share price has quadrupled and it's now the second largest company in the FTSE 100. So please do give us a call if you'd like to hear more about our thoughts on AstraZeneca. Moving on to have a look at next week. Earnings season is beginning, so it's looking very busy on the corporate calendar. At the start of next week, we are expecting results out from Goldman Sachs, Rio Tinto and United Health. That's it from us. Enjoy the weekend and we'll see you next Friday.